Professor Adrian Hill helped create the vaccine. He's also the director of the Jenner Institute at Oxford University. We reached him in Oxford, England. Well, Professor Hill, I guess uh, congratulations are in order, but I, I do want to start with a little bit of a tough question. Frankly, Health Canada found in its review that the vaccine is 62% effective. We know that in countries like Germany, uh, people are somewhat reticent to get this particular vaccine. There's a preference there, for instance, for the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine. So what do you say to Canadians who might be looking at the data and saying, well, perhaps I'd rather hold out for a different vaccine? Yeah, I wouldn't do that. I think this is probably the best vaccine to have. And remember that when people come up with a single number describing how a vaccine performs, you need to look very carefully at the data. So what we know now is that the vaccine that we're seeing licensed in Canada today has been tested for real world effectiveness just in the last month or two. Mm -hmm. And uh, the best data come from a 4 million person study in Scotland released earlier this week. A million vaccinees, about half with the Pfizer vaccine, half with the AstraZeneca vaccine. And uh, the efficacy seen in that study was high for Pfizer, it was uh, 85%, but for AstraZeneca, it was 94%. So these are both very effective vaccines. So is the Moderna RNA vaccine, the third vaccine now licensed in, in Canada. So people can be reassured that all of these vaccines are performing extremely well. I want to ask you about a specific aspect of the performance and certainly one that you're well familiar with. Uh, when it comes to some of the pushback, you know that countries like France and Germany have said, uh, and, I, and I know France is actually reviewing this decision at this point, but that they, they don't want to give it to people over the age of 65. In Canada, we are focused on our elder, uh, vaccinating our elderly um, population right now, some of the oldest Canadians, and we'll be working our way down. Um, what can you say, I guess, again, to, to reassure Canadians about using this vaccine for people uh, 65 and up? Yeah, so in that trial, I, well, it wasn't a trial, in that study that I just described in Scotland where uh, 4 million people were followed, uh, the average age of those groups showing really high efficacy, 95%, 94% efficacy, was over 70 years of age. So we now have really clear-cut evidence that with a single dose of the AstraZeneca vaccine, very high efficacy against hospitalization in a real world setting. So, you know, we always expected that to be the case because the immune responses in older adults are just as high as they are in young adults. But now we have real clear data showing that is the case. Do, do you think it's something that, um, I mean, in this case, I'll ask you about Canadian authorities, that Canadian authorities should be concerned about when you look at the examples of what's happening in other countries? I mean, you make the point about the real world data and the fact that the vaccine that you have been a part of stands up, but it certainly sounds like some um, regulators and, and some citizens aren't getting the message. Is there, is there something you'd like to see the government of Canada or Health Canada do, uh, for instance, to encourage people to get this vaccine? Yeah, well, I think health authorities are doing their best. And indeed, if you look carefully, so are politicians, so are regulatory agencies putting the message out there very clearly that all of these vaccines, and there are more than three that are licensed around the world, look extremely safe and very effective. And indeed, they would not be licensed by stringent regulatory authorities like Health Canada, the European Medicines Agency, the WHO, and so on, if they were not very safe. So there is a messaging challenge there for health authorities, for governments, because it's good for all of us that more and more people get vaccinated. So yes, we you know, know there are anti-vaxxers out there. There are far larger numbers of people who are not against vaccines, we're just a bit hesitant and want to know a bit more about this. So it really is a challenge for all of us, but including the press, to get the message out there on what the data say now. And remember, because this has been such an extraordinarily rapid development of multiple vaccines, there are still numbers from you know, two or three months ago being rehearsed in the press that are now out of date. So let me just give you an example mm -hmm. of that. When we started uh, using our vaccine, we gave two doses a month apart. We also had groups who had a dose and then another dose three months later, a much longer interval. 
And not terribly surprisingly, you get much higher efficacy in the 80% range with the long interval and only 60% with the shorter interval. But because of rather formal regulatory guidance on what your primary endpoint was in a particular trial, the number that's out there for our vaccine is 62%. Well, that's not relevant now because the vaccine is not being used in that way with a one month interval. It's being used with a three month interval as recommended by the European Medicines Agency, by WHO, by the UK regulator, and now- Do you get frustrated? No, we feel that we've got more work to do. And, uh, you know, gradually the message gets through, the scare stories go away. Uh, you know, there were really unfortunate uh, statements made by some heads of state in the, in the European Union that have since been effectively retracted. But, you know, the, the message really is important uh, that it's delivered correctly and repeatedly so that people are reassured because we are asking people to come and be vaccinated, not just for their own good, but for the good of the whole population. I just want to quickly ask you about variants. I understand that AstraZeneca is talking about a six to nine month timeline when it comes to, um, I guess, uh, I'll, I'll say adapting the vaccine, although I'm happy to be <laughs> uh, cor corrected in terms of a more technical term. But is, is that what you think we're looking at right now as we try to deal with, you know, the, vari the various variants of concern? Uh, no, it's not. It's shorter than that. Uh, we anticipate that there should be trials sometime in summer, so, you know, four or five months away. The, the, the challenge, of course, is to have a vaccine against the South African variant, which is the one that the current vaccines are least effective against, but still, you know, highly effective in the sense of preventing severe disease and death. Uh, and, you know, it's still not clear that we will need different vaccines once we get data on the effectiveness of the current vaccines against the South African strain. So that remains to be assessed, but certainly all the major companies are developing South African strain vaccines in case they are needed. And my guess is they will be needed in some countries in the world, including South Africa, but probably not else, elsewhere. Okay, Professor Hill, we really appreciate your time today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.